On today's Apple Daily, we are talking Apple TV, the current, the future, and the far future. So let's get right into it. And today's show is brought to you by my merch. Yeah, okay, there's not a lot of designs in the store just yet, but I would love you to check them out over at iCaveDave.com forward slash merch and let me know in the comments what Apple products you'd like to see in my next design, probably also in a pop art style. I think some of the G3s in their cool colours would be pretty great. Over the past few days, there's been a lot of stuff dropping about the future plans for Apple TV, both near term and longer term, so that is the focus for today's video. We'll start with what's just around the corner, and then we'll look at some patents that have been filed for further outdates, and how that ties into Apple's wider ecosystem, and an idea that I don't think anyone's mentioned yet, which actually makes a lot of sense. Fair warning, there will be a lot of could mean and maybes in this video, so don't assume all of this is leaks. Uh, it's information that we have, and then extrapolating that out. So first, the hardware. There's been a number of different configurations suggested for what will power the next Apple TV, with the least powerful suggested being an A12Z or A14. At the time of writing, lining up with the current but not for long 2020 iPad Pro, and also the A14 in the iPad Air and iPhone 12. Though the iPad Air version of the A14 is actually faster in many ways than the iPhone version, and more likely the one that they would go with. The more powerful possibility, and possibly the reason that we haven't seen this Apple TV yet, is A14X, which would be unlikely to drop in an Apple TV box before it did it in an iPad Pro, but it could certainly come at the same event. Now, bearing in mind that the A14X is, as far as we know, either the same chip or at least equivalent in performance to the M1, it is difficult to see Apple TV keeping its current price tag of around $180. So could the reason that we've had mixed rumours about what powers it be that there are actually two versions coming? Thinking about it more, I think it's a pretty legit argument. And we know price-wise that Apple can get an A12 with its board along with batteries, a high-resolution Retina touch panel, speakers, and much more for $300, which is the student price for the iPad, or an A13 in a $400 iPhone that also has Touch ID, better cameras, cellular modems, and the rest in the iPhone SE. There's a lot to strip away from those older chips that would make a very compelling Apple TV experience at a much lower price. So for clarity for the rest of this video we'll call these the Apple TV and the Apple TV Pro for the A14X more powerful version. Now Apple TV as a segment could go to 4K in with 120Hz in 2021. 9to5Mac has discovered code in the latest tvOS 14.5 beta that refers to Apple using HDMI 2.1 to deliver double the frame rate at 4K compared to the current devices that Apple offers. This news actually dropped just before I shot yesterday's show, but as an upgrade to the Apple TV, it does make more sense than putting 8K TV in a box, uh, needing to push about half as many pixels as 8K at 60 would. Now, we know that the A12X and A12Z is quite capable of 120Hz, although this is a few more pixels, but it would also be able to use active cooling, just like the Apple TV 4K, which runs an A10X with a fan right now. This would probably be an Apple TV Pro feature. It sits in line with what we've been hearing too about the iPhone Pro models being 120Hz ProMotion capable this year and also with rumours of Apple TV getting more of a gaming focus. There are probably more TVs out there already that support 120Hz than there are with 8K panels so that's a bigger market for Apple to address right away and it could encourage more of the higher tier let's say AA rated titles like Call of Duty Mobile to consider supporting Apple TV too though where their balance point is between paid games and freemium is the tricky part here. There's no reason, however, that Apple couldn't, as we've said before, look to buy some game studios and bring their own first-party games to a similar level, though I don't imagine that Apple would do something as realistically violent as Call of Duty, but Fortnite manages to make shooting one another in the face with large guns quite fun, so there are definitely ways. It's easy to bring the same scene from a movie down from a hard R rating to a PG-13 by having it either aliens or robots being blown away instead of humans, and just look at every big Marvel movie battle if you don't believe me. As with the rest of what Apple does, you'll be able to play these games across all of the current devices, but with 120Hz support probably being reserved for things with Pro in the name. So iPad Pro, iPhone Pro, and now Apple TV Pro. And maybe MacBook Pro, if ProMotion comes to the next generation there with mini LED displays too. In fact, fine, let's bring back iMac Pro as well for ProMotion. But moving away from gaming, as we've covered a lot of that with Apple Arcade on Monday's show, which you can find right up here, let's talk about how the lines could be blurred into Mac territory. The A14, if that's what we were to get in the next Apple TV, would have the performance of an M1 Mac. So why not allow a keyboard and mouse or trackpad to be connected over Bluetooth and at least use 
the iPad OS versions of things like Pages, Numbers and Keynote to have a mini productivity machine. Even as low as the current A10X Apple TV, this would work just great as it's what powered the 2017 iPad Pro generation. Now supporting this, Apple has recently filed a patent for a Magic Keyboard and Trackpad that doesn't appear to be attached to anything and also supports the Apple Pencil input on the trackpad, which would make a pretty awesome couch interface for getting some light work done or kids doing some homework, assuming they have an Apple TV in their rooms. But with this level of power, why stop at iWork? iMovie on the TV could be pretty awesome as well, especially if you use your iPhone as the clip picker and maybe a trackpad if you don't have a keyboard setup. I know I'm going to be opening a can of worms again here, but maybe Apple TV Pro with the power of M1 could actually run Final Cut Pro, or at least whatever version of Final Cut eventually comes to the iPad Pro that we've been hearing about for some time. And yes, this could be a subscription service, and I know a lot of people hate the idea of a subscription option, but it could be. I'm just saying. Now, moving further into patents, and these come via Patently Apple, there are concepts that would add more virtual displays around your physical display in your field of view, and I can imagine these being used to add one of the features that is the best thing that Amazon Prime has on their videos, where if you pause the video, X-Ray comes up. This basically tells you the name of every actor in the current scene with a photo so you know who is who, as well as what else they've been in. This is genius as what are you grabbing your phone for when you're watching TV? To find out who is that guy? What, what else have I seen him in? So just an absolutely amazing feature that Amazon has right now. But imagine that information popping out beside the screen when you make a certain gesture using augmented reality on one of Apple's headsets. Captions could appear just off the screen as well, perhaps underneath or above, instead of overlaying over the content that you're watching, getting in the way of it. And the patent also describes, of course, the use of this to expand Mac displays. So perhaps when you're doing video editing, like we mentioned before, your content bins could slide out from the side of your TV or your timeline could be attached underneath the display and your screen itself is purely the viewer for the video that you're editing. In the final Apple patent that relates to Apple TV, it's around lenticular lenses. These are the kind of glasses-free 3D panels the Nintendo DS used to add depth to its games. Now, of course, 3D TV did awesome, and we all now spend 100% of our time, if not more, watching TV with dumb glasses on, as everyone knows. But Apple's patent would not only allow 3D without glasses, don't assume that it would suck as hard as other lenticular displays too, Apple's really good at making stuff that other people have done much, much better. But this patent also describes a display that could show different content to different viewers. For example, you could have the whole family sitting down to watch a movie together, but the kids on one side of the room get a censored version of the film, and the parents get the full-on, slightly more gory version. This could also work based on the height of the people watching. And I know I said we were done with gaming, but you could also have multiplayer gaming in the same room with each player only seeing their own screen, even though you're both looking at the same screen. Pretty awesome. At this point, we're also talking about a display built by Apple, an Apple TV screen, which I very much dismissed yesterday in iCave Answers as a crazy idea. But this would be a little bit different to that. So let me know what you think about these ideas. Are you more excited for Apple TV now? Also, I have to give a big shout out to Apple Tomorrow, again, for all the renders, especially in the thumbnail, as he's just started a Patreon for his work. If you really appreciate what he does, like I do, please go and check it out. Link is in the description. But for now, let's get to your questions. If you want to get a question answered in the show, all you need to do, ask me down in the comments section using the hashtag iCaveAnswers, and I will get to it as soon as I can. S. Satirius Maximus asks, iCaveAnswers, do you think that we will see an external magic keyboard with touch bar? I can't imagine my Mac experience without the touch bar anymore. Well, buddy, uh, I have some bad news for you. It looks like the touch bar is going away altogether. Um, so I don't see it coming to an external display. Uh, so I don't see it coming to an external keyboard. However, we have seen the rumors in the past. I've done a whole video on how magical the uh, Magic Keyboard could get because it looks like Apple is going to bring um, OLED touch. Uh, it looks like Apple may bring OLED keycaps to their keyboards, um, which initially I think will probably just come to that top row, the function keys, so that they can be more useful uh, and basically replace the touch bar in that way. But eventually they could actually bring uh, OLED keycaps to the entire keyboard. Now, is this going to be a cheap thing? No, it is not. But I think it would be a pretty awesome experience and you'd be able to kind of have the entire keyboard customizable to whatever you want. And I do think that Apple would probably bring that to their external keyboards as well. Um, assuming they find a good way of doing the charging. 
hopefully not sticking a lightning cable up in the bottom of it so that you can't sit it flat but uh, it could well be something that uses something along the lines of MagSafe. Thomas E asks, I cave answers. Do you think it makes sense for most people to buy in 27 slash 31 inch iMac even once it gets the M1X? Given the existence of the M1 or M1X Mac Mini, you can get a decent display and a Mac Mini for about £1,000, and the base Mac Mini holds its price better than any of the other computers, so it might only cost £200 to upgrade it in two years' time. So this uh, ties back to exactly what we are talking about in yesterday's show with uh, stuff holding its value better. Obviously, the displays themselves, that's one of the annoying things about an iMac is that you kind of when your computer bit dies, the display is kind of useless. Um, so that's a bit annoying. I would love to see Apple bring a modular system. I think we talked about this way back in like October time where you would be able to basically replace the kind of Apple Silicon module in your Mac. So basically the whole main board, especially in um, an iMac or something like that. So it's basically upgradable over time. You keep the screen because the screen is good and you replace the, the brain of it, if you like. Um, other than that, I mean, this is what I've done here. So this is a Mac Mini with a couple of big old displays. Um, it cost me about £1,000 to set up, actually, including both displays. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's a really good option. The things that you do miss out on, though, when you do this is you miss out on the webcam. You miss out on the integration. So, like, when I want to turn this on, I have to turn on the monitors, like manually i know it's a it's a horrible handicap that i have to put up with but in all honesty it's absolutely fine if you've got an iphone you can use something like iriun cam um which is an app that allows you to use your iphone as a webcam so that's kind of pretty good i don't imagine many people are buying a mac that don't own an iphone so that's kind of a good option um you do need your own keyboard and mouse and a lot of people prefer to have a mechanical keyboard they don't necessarily love the apple ones but the Apple ones are also a really nice kind of throw in with an iMac. So uh, what I would say is if you are a tinkerer, um, to the extent that you can tinker with Macs, uh, Mac Mini is great. If you just want a solution that you can plug in one power cable on your desk and start using it, the iMac is amazing. The Mac Mini gives you a bit more flexibility and probably will save you some money, especially in the long term, because you can keep using the monitors. But there we go. That's uh, that's where I sit on it. So thank you so much for watching today, guys. Um, hope you've enjoyed this kind of dip into Apple TV and the future that it might hold for us. It's an exciting time to be an Apple user. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one.